Carolinas. Welcome to the States. Hello, welcome. Come on in. I think, I think this is the right stuff. This is a fine piece of very ripe Delrin, which will be just perfect for making our instruments. Let's, let's harvest it. Hello again, I thought I'd show you my, my large lathe. This is a lathe for machine work. Uh, it's a big one so that I can put a big piece of material inside the head. I don't need this much power, but I do need the capacity. It needs to be this big, and other th uh, features of this lathe are important. So here's the Delrin. I'm going to show you putting it in the machine. I'm going to mount it in the chuck. It won't ever become an instrument. I'll just show you some of the process, the manufacturing process. This is a gun drill. Uh, you can see it has a carbide tip that's heart metal and uh, it's brazed on here. Uh, this is the hardest material made by man. And the shank is hollow and it, we blow air through it to clear the chips and to carry coolant sometimes. So I'm going to show you the process of running this lathe and drilling a hole in it. I'd like to show you some of the details of preparing the onyx penny whistle. You can see this one on the right. It needs a lot of handwork. The machine work was done on this milling machine over here to my left, uh, but the machine can only do so much, and now it's up to the job of the craftsman to put the finishing touches on it. So this one is uh, not touched. This one over here remaining, I've done some of the handwork scraping. Uh, making the edges square, preparing the blade or labium. I'm going to sand the entrance to the windway. You see that I've cut it a little bit, put it on this jig to hold it. I'm going to run the sandpaper through. So now I'm going to uh, cut the upper chamfer which is at the exit of the windway, at the roof of the windway, at the window. You usually do this by scraping. This is one of the delicate operations. I come in at a low angle with my knife and I'm creating a flat surface which is typically one millimeter. This adjusts the uh, playability of the whistle, uh, its loudness, and uh, of course if it's too loud then it would uh, overdrive the whistle. After the scraping, I'm going to sand it again on that fixture I had a minute ago. Here's one of the blocks I make it from Delrin rod. I put the Delrin rod in a collet. This holds it in the machine. I put it in this machine over here. I'm going to show you the cuts that the machine makes. If you notice this, this block is not a circular round smooth cylinder. Instead it's faceted. It's, it's a bunch of flats on the outside and the reason for that is that I put the material in the machine and I have it cut the block to a known size and position. And when it's of that size, it's a precise size to fit inside the head. But it's also a precise position that the machine understands. And knowing that position, then the machine cuts the windway, this notch, this groove, this recess in it to a precise relation to the outside of the block. 
if I had cut it round on another machine, put it in the machine, there would be a there would be a loss of precision. There would be a loss of knowing or an agreement about where the center was or how deep anything was. Very critical is the lower chamfer. That's this feature on this part of the block where the floor of the windway comes up and it takes a bend downward to make the air jet, the air stream thicker, a nozzle as it, the air shoots across the window. And it governs a lot of the playability and the response and the quality of the instrument. The most important critical adjustment is a feature, a surface between the lower chamfer and the floor that I scrape here to break that edge. It's a very fine surface right there. can make the difference between a good playing whistle and a bad one. So now we're going to test our block to see if we've adjusted it properly. We just insert the block in the whistle. It's a, it's a nice precise fit and uh, it should seat with a snap. There we go. And then we assemble it with the rest of the penny whistle and uh, toot it. So I have the uh, onyx upper section, the uh, upper body, the left hand section usually, and I've just drilled the tone holes, but as you see it needs some, uh, some detail, some handwork to make it right. This uh, detail of the handwork, the rounding, the uh, finishing, um, cuts the noise. It, it makes it a better quality of the tone coming through. Sometimes with the penny whistles people want that um, that whisper, that, uh, that hiss, the chiff, uh, but at other times it's, it's just nice to have a sweet tone. So I'm going to do some finish work on these holes. First I used uh, the Dremel to grind a top round. I hope you can see that this cutter has been ground so it is it has a waist or a narrow part here and then toward the tip it's wider on a curvature so it, this, if I just use this uh, bit to go straight in, of course it will be a straight cylindrical hole. But if I move it around like this, then the walls will no longer be, if I, once I am in, if I move around like this, then the side walls will no longer be parallel and there will no longer be a cylindrical hole. And what will happen is that this cutter will impart a curvature to the side walls of the hole, I need to go back to center before I pull the cutter out. And this curve side walls it greatly improves the tone. Of course, that shape, that geometry can be done by a craftsman with a file with a lot of work and a lot of time. So we're getting the, the proper details and the quality of features that we need uh, at, with a reliable method and a repeatable form. I'm putting a chamfer where the tone hole meets the bore at the lower end inside and I've uh, chamfered it and now I'm rounding it. That's why I'm rocking the file like this going round and round making a nice curved transition for a smooth airflow and a, and a clear tone, clear tone, musical tone. So we, here we have the whistle together. I've put the block in the head. I've put this head on the rest of the body. Sometimes I use a test body and we test it. Now, I think this whistle deserves just a little adjusting. So I'm going to take the block out and I'm going to adjust it. And then I have to retest it. And sometimes this uh, takes a few tries.
I'm going to shorten the block so it goes in more deeply so that lower chamfer is closer to the window and that changes the angle of the airstream. Doesn't take much. So now we're testing it. This is the third time with this block. I've shortened it. It, it seats, it goes in more deeply and that changes the angle. We'll try the low notes. But as I go up to the top of the first octave, that's the note B and what I want to do is go from there, push a little harder and reach the second octave. Now if I tongue it, it'll, it'll jump immediately. Just one screw to hold the block in place. Just to hold it from f falling out. Now because this block was shortened, it went in more deeply and I shortened the tip of the head and now I have to recut these in sweeps. This, these features make the instrument play better. It's, it's a smoother, it cuts the noise, makes it more musical and it makes it a better instrument. Okay. I'm applying this dishwashing detergent. The active ingredient is sodium laurel sulfate, which is a surfactant. In other words, it breaks the droplets down. When you're playing the penny whistle, you don't want droplet beads of moisture in the windway. It will, um, it'll, it'll block the windway. It'll interrupt your playing. And so I apply it just a little bit at the entrance, blow it through. as long as there's some present and then we test the whistle Okay.